So, hello, this is Dana Robinson from Arts and Scraps, and we're here for a workshop on B and a half uh, learning and learning styles. I'm Dana, and with me is uh, Patrick, and Patrick is our moderator. He's waving to you. Uh, we're going to have, and I'm going to share a screen now, and I'll be talking. We're going to have an agenda here. Okay, let's see here. Go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Let's end the show and start again. Okay. So we have an agenda, which is a greeting, and we've done that, and an introduction. An introduction is going to be in the form of an icebreaker for us. Uh, we have our B and a half and learning styles talk, short talk, and then a couple of hands-ons, and then we'll have a reflection. Uh, so. We've introduced ourselves. Now we have this here while others are signing in, which is to, as you see and read, uh, go into the chat and post a thing about yourself that you believe no one else in your in this group can claim to be true about themselves. And I'm going to stop the uh, share in order to allow you to do that. Okay, I'm going in and I put mine in. And now that we've all put ours in, we'll go through and look at them. And if anyone else shares yours, you've got to come up with a new one. And if you have one that is unique to you, then you're finished. I'll start. I used to dunk basketballs. It's probably because I was 6'5", which is reasonable. But anyway, anybody else dunk basketballs? No? OK, well, then I'm through. The next person? Oh, you've been in space. Okay, that's pretty good. Well, so forth and so on. All right, having done that, let's go back to our share screen and see what's next on our PowerPoint. Ah, we're going to go into a little bit of talk about arts and scraps. And a little bit means that I'm just going to tell you that essentially arts and scraps is a place that accumulates things that have been tossed for. Uh, trash uh, from industries and from homes and we recycle it and we reuse it, repurpose it for learning and for fun. So we have all sorts of stuff. We've got a store, we have a warehouse, we come where kids gather, we invite kids into our place and you can go to our website artsandscraps.org and it'll tell you more than you want to know about arts and scraps and that's enough of that. Next thing is our learning uh, one of our learning models is being a half and I want to explain that being a half so when you do something artsy or otherwise you get materials you get instructions a getting materials b getting instructions and c you start making a product and produce with children on the other hand they when they're doing something they get materials they get instructions uh, for b but somewhere between getting instructions and making the product they get into this B and a half world where there's play and imagination exploration and kids sort of lose sight of the product and they more get more involved in the process. And that's where we live. We love the process. So we tend to want to encourage children, not so much to, to give us a product, but to use their imagination and their uh, exploration to come up with what leads them. So they sort of take ownership. And that's what we're all about. That's that being a half that we sort of grow out of as we become adults because we get very uh, intensively worried about. So then when we're talking to children who are doing our projects, these are the kind of phrases we use. We don't say, oh, that's a perfect picture, or man, that's a gorgeous, or that's wonderful. We say things like, I like the idea you had for that, or you worked hard on that. 
or makes me smile? How does it make you feel? Or our biggest favorite is tell me about this. Now, another phrase we use all the time is, when in the process, children have tons of questions. And our answer is always, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. And I may know, but I don't know. And let's go find out. So then that encourages us to go and experience whatever the question is, research, uh, maybe we do an application in order to figure it out. And the kids learn best when they're doing. So that's that whole idea. Now, there are also learning styles. And this is the second part of what I want to talk about. I'm going to say it quickly. Learning styles means that we have children who are two-thirds of the children uh, learn in ways other than expository learning. Expository learning is I pick up a book, I read it, and I understand it. And most teachers are expository learners. Uh, there's probably teachers from way, way, way back when who understood that there's something different about a way a kid learns and they were expert by reaching the kid through other means. Well, now it's become curriculum because we now understand that there's uh, such a thing as, uh, well, let me pull up the screen for that. Give us that. Now I have this in the uh, chat box. All these links are in the chat box. So when we finish this video, I want you to save the chat so you can go in and go and get this information because we're certainly not going to have enough time to uh, go in and look this stuff up. So I'm going to get the page so real quickly and look at the learning style uh, page. So the main three or four, and there's three or four, visual learning, uh, there's auditory learning, and then there's what's called kinesthetic learning. And then these are ways to deal with those kinds of learnings. And so they give you the examples. This is one of the handouts we have. And then, of course, we have uh, another model, and there's many models out there. And this one has eight, and it includes the three, and it has uh, uh, five more, and they also refer to that. So that's a good thing to have access to and you can figure out what your kid has as a learning style, and that'll help them. Now we go back to our slideshow projector, and we'll go down to the next thing, which is inventories. So they have learning style inventories, which are free online. And that's good because, and again, that's in your box, and you can, I think I put those in. Yeah, good. So they're in the box and you'll be able to go online and pull up an inventory or two. And I found this one. So here's one and it's a multiple choice and you look at it and V is for, of course, visual, audio, kinetic, and then you rate it or your child rates it and then they go through the inventory and they add up the score. And then there's instructions about how to best meet that particular type of learning if that's your kid. So kids stop falling through the cracks so often when we actually are reaching them the way they learn. There's no uh, shame and guilt to learning differently. We just are, are shame that's taking us so long to figure that out. Okay, so having done that, and I would really encourage you to go to that. Any questions? If you have a question, I'll have to stop to share and see. But the next thing we're gonna do is are what we do best. And that is we have hands-on. So we're gonna have a couple of B and a half hands-on. And the first B and a half hands-on is, is what I'm calling salt painting. And this is what our founder uh, put together years ago. And we've been using it ever since. So you're gonna need these things, salt, uh, watercolors or thin tempura, paint, paper glue, uh, paper, glue, I don't know why I paper it twice, I'll have to fix that, paintbrush and water. So I'm gonna go to my screen and stop this and we'll quickly talk about this. Now what's wonderful about this, and we'll put our screen up, is um, the children, you can talk about what happens to salt when it gets put in water. I'll need that screen now, the large screen, uh, Patrick. Great. So you can talk to kids about uh, salt uh, being put in water and that it 
sort of disappears or dissolves is what it is. And you can ask the kids what they think is happening and all that. And, uh, but our activity centers around taking uh, essentially glue and maybe writing, I'm going to write my name because I like my name. Okay, there's my name. It's upside down. I bet I can fix that. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So there's my name. And then we simply take some salt and we sprinkle it over the uh, glue. And there's a lot of science into why the salt sticks to the glue, etc. But depending on the age of the kid, we're not going to talk about uh, surface uh, and all that other stuff. Now, I don't like to waste things, so I'm going to take my salt and I'm going to pour it into a tray because I'm going to use it again. Uh, probably not to season food, but since I do other things craftily, that's okay. And then we're going to take our paint. And in my case, I'm just going to get a couple of colors here. A little bit of red. And maybe a little bit of uh, yellow. And hopefully you have those very inexpensive uh, paints. Let's go with green. Very inexpensive paint trays, which are great for uh, children. I couldn't find mine. I probably have about a zillion, but I couldn't find them. So I'm using this a uh, little bit more elaborate. And I'm going to uh, water it down a little bit. And I get my brush nice and wet with the paint. And then I just touch it to the surface. Nice and wet. And look at what happens. Pretty cool, huh? And then, of course, get another color. Whoa, that wasn't good. In my case, I'm just doing the green. And I'm going to touch that to the surface. And so you get the point. Pretty cool. So then what happens is after this is over and they've done a picture or their name or whatever design they want, they can smear it and make it flat, etc. The question becomes, I wonder what's going to happen to this in an hour? What's going to happen to it in a day? Can we put more paint on it later? What if we use Epsom salt instead of regular salt? Maybe we can try uh, sea salt or bath oil salts. All those things are interesting things. So let's find out. And so we're going to just have some fun. And that pretty much is that activity. And you can probably figure out that there's a zillion things elsewise you can do with that. So that takes care of that one. And the other one I have, and let's go back to my share screen and my uh, PowerPoint. And ah, we have, and this should have been, I'll have to wipe this out. It says ball mobile, but it's in black and I'm going to have to make it white. So it will contrast. Anyway, for that one, we need just a CD. And we need uh, old cards that we don't want anymore. Scissors pen if we want to, and a string, which is optional. And in this one, it's very simple. We're just going to take our, and I'll get out of this now. 
we're going to let's move this out of the way. That was fun while it lasted. Kind of. And we're going to center it on the line. I, I would say that's always a good thing to do. Or you can turn it over and decide. I don't like that one so much. And you're going to cut a circle out. Uh, old CD. Cut a circle. You can actually just pick it up and hold it and cut it if you like. I'm a little bit more, uh, I don't know. And you're going to do this for nine uh, cards. So you need nine of these deals. Let's see here. Let me get a little bit less specific and just go ahead and do it. I'll go for it. And of course, it doesn't have to be so neat. It won't necessarily be so neat if the child is doing it depending on their age. But who cares? If you're going to hang this, you want to put a hole in the center of your base piece. And you notice that I'm a little bit short on this end. I don't care, it's not a big deal. And here, what we do is we, now I tend to wanna find my center. Uh, and maybe I would do it by looking through here. I don't know. But I like to find the center between my, my line. And you're gonna cut almost to the edge. I say almost, I don't know, quarter inch, something like that. So I've cut to the edge. And then you're going to simply assemble it by placing it towards the center on the card. And I think I want my colorful side out. So there we have it. And I'm going to do that with eight more of these. And we'll just use our imagination and realize, oh, coffee, that's what I need. And realize that we end up with a nice ball, which can be hung as a uh, ornament if they're small circles or large. An extension on this one is, I think I would even cut that a little further, but anyway, the extension on this is, what do we do with it? So it could be a diagram, you could have maybe four, and you could have different things depending on whatever subject you want to talk about or whatever you want to talk. You can make it, uh, instead of circles, it could be square, it could be hard shaped. Um, there's many different ways you can, uh, can make this, and then there's a multitude of ways that you can use it. And just giving the kids the basic of making this and then letting them go with it. They can make a huge one where they can actually make rooms for a doll house or something else. Uh, that would be okay. I'm going black, so I'm gonna say okay. And then I'm back on again, except I'm not upside down. So let's go, there we go. Yeah, so that's the second activity. And now we'll go to, um, and of course, if we have people here, I would just let them take the time to do it. I'm not gonna stay and do that. Mm -hmm. And go back now. So we have our, yeah, and now we have our reflection. So a reflection in this case is gonna be a way of getting feedback from you about this presentation. Um, there's three images that I've listed here and they're all involved with a flower. So there's a rose and then there's a bud and there's a thorn. So what I want you to do is in your text box, I'd like you to respond to all three, if you'd like, 
but at least one of these that resonates with you and finish the statement. So if the thorn statement is the one that you're gonna uh, respond to, you'll say uh, thorn in your chat box, and then you'll say, uh, I found this to be challenging. It wasn't so easy about this particular presentation. Or this, I think, could have been done better. And maybe you would tell what we could do to improve whatever it was that sort of gave you a little trouble. And then if you want to respond to the bud, of course, this one is uh, something that got you excited, that you think, I'm going to try this. I think I really like that paint thing. And that's something my kid would like. So that was great. And I'm going to try that. And then, of course, the rose would be, oh, what I liked most was, you know, uh, that uh, here's an old guy who, who remembers that he used to dunk. That's kind of cool. Um, and I'll finish with this little story about the learning style. So I, I was educated in education uh, centuries ago. Yeah, well, decades ago. And we didn't learn about learning styles. I don't think that it was a curriculum back in the 70s. By the end of my teaching career, it had become a thing and it had become a huge thing. And I was so excited because we now have a majority of teachers who are really very professionally trained to handle different learning styles. Now, here's my backstory. My scholarship was because of my mathematical abilities. Uh, I was always a tutor, probably, my mother says, from a very young age. I don't remember being in uh, elementary tutoring my brothers, my older brothers. Uh, but that's what she says I did. And I loved math. I uh, didn't know it as a kid, but I, it came easy to me. And then my scholarship was my scores and placement. So I went to a full scholarship based on my math. I was tutoring college math before I got into college. And I was tutoring courses that I hadn't had yet just by getting the book and reading them. So, and then I've helped many people, uh, friends and, and, uh, and acquaintances get uh, post degrees, et cetera, in different fields because of my mathematics. So, you know, math is math. Anyway, just recently I had an opportunity to tutor my nephew. My nep nephew is very antsy. He's a junior high school kid and I, ha I had a chance to tutor him. And I was having a horrible time with him. And I thought it was because he was distracted, he was misbehaving, et cetera, et cetera. And it was, it was sort of a terrible relationship. First time I did not have anyone come to me and say, oh, I'm so glad we have this experience because you've opened this up to me and I see I can do it and you help me, blah, blah, blah. And that's normally what happens. And I always teach in a style that the teacher teaches in and I know all the teaching styles for expository learning. And after the experience, uh, I reflected back on this and I realized that he is not an expository learner. He's not a kid who sits still and uh, listens and reads books and learns that way. He has a whole different learning style and I missed that. And consequently, of course, I went back and apologized to him because he didn't know why we were bumping heads so much. But I told him that I had missed his style and I apologized. Um, and it's interesting that in all these years, um, I finally come across a kid who's really so different in his learning style that I wasn't able to reach him. Now I know that I have access to many different strategies to meet kids who have to get up and move every so often. Um, anyway, uh, hopefully your child uh, can figure out with you what their learning style is, and they're going to be just happy that you're in their world, depending on their age, doing anything. But you can make it a very fruitful, play, fun time, engage them in, in ways that's going to help them to uh, be strong, and that'll be good. All right, so um, I'm going to now, I think, just tune out. And after you have um, signed in and, of course, put down your response in this reflection, um, then save the chat, and it'll save to your device. 
and then you can go back and look at what others said and also to get those very valuable links. And of course, if you can't get the links or you don't, just type in learning styles or learning style inventories and there's a zillion of them out there. Uh, and, and take some time to, to experience that and I think it's gonna be beneficial to you. So I'm gonna say goodbye and thank you and we'll see you in the next one on Thursday if you happen to wanna come back. And Patrick is going to wave and say bye, and then he's going to take us out of here.